I used to be the proud owner of a Luscom 8A airplane. Long ago in the solid wood and stick and tissue model era, a model of this airplane would easily have been obtained. Now it's been so long ago that that airplane was produced that no plastic model seems to exist in any scale other than 187th. A friend of mine and a model train fan suggested one might be made in your garage as a vacuform model. After a lot of research and trial and error, I succeeded in making a really inferior vacuform Luscom 8A kit. This video shows how I did it. Let's make it clear right now that I am not an expert at this, and this is just how I managed to blunder into it. There are also mater other materials, I'm sure. This method would not be very good for a serious production run as the molds would be too fragile. Briefly the review what vacuforming is. In this method of molding plastic, a sheet of plastic is heated so that it is pliable and is placed over a mold that is connected to a vacuum source. When the vacuum is applied, the atmospheric pressure pushes the heated plastic into the mold. There are two types of vacuforming, let's say. The first is called male drip method. A master pattern that looks like the part you want to vacuform is placed on a flat surface with holes in it that leads to a vacuforming machine such as a vacuum cleaner. The heated plastic is placed over the form and the vacuum cleaner is turned on and the part is made by the plastic being drawn down over the mold. This method produces a shape of the mold but it does not produce any detail on the outside surface because the mold is on the inside surface. This is okay for things like canopies that don't need any detail, but it isn't very good in general. Here a new canopy was made and installed on an old F-101 model. The second vacuform method uses a female mold that is made with a master male mold that looks like the part being produced. To make the mold, you have to make a master of the part that you're trying to make to form the cavity in the mold. Basically, now you could maybe 3D print the part or cast it from an already existing uh, part. But for the garage uh, effort, you have to have something carved probably of wood. I use boxwood because balsa wood is too easily damaged and gets dense and shows grain. And boxwood is easily carved and easily scribed. So you have to make the part and basically I glue two pieces of boxwood together with some newspaper in between and carve the part with the center line being the place where they fit together and then split them apart to get the two halves. This, this area here is an area I put in to improve the flow into the mold. I, I don't think it's really necessary. Once you have the master, you mount it on a flat board, and then you have to put a surround on the flat board that's taller than the, than the top of the pattern. Otherwise, you won't be able to fill it up high enough to cover the, the part, and it goes all the way around, and that contains your plaster when you pour it in there. And then the part has to have a, lots of holes which you will insert a wire in to provide the entry point or the exit point for the vacuform air. So ultimately your ready to pour mold would have wire sticking out of it and every one of those little holes like that. Your finished mold would look something like this. You can see that all these little holes are the result of the wires that you put in and then pulled back out again. If you just pour the plaster to the full depth, it would be very difficult to get these wires out. To get around this, pour the plaster in stages of about one eighth to one quarter inch, and then put a straw over the top of the wire such that it sits on top of that stage and continue to pour. Do this in such a way that the amount of hardened plaster you would have to pull the wire out through is between a quarter and a half an inch. Don't let the straw get as low as the mold or the base as that will ruin the pattern.
The top of the poured mold should look something like this after you remove the wires and the straws. I put plastic strip around the edge so that the when you place the plastic over this and suck a vacuum on it, it will seal around the edge here and allow the vacuum to be drawn inside it. The mold is mounted on top of a, a box-like structure and the vacuum cleaner connects here. And this area around here has to be airtight so that it can pull a vacuum. This is done with, what else, duct tape. A similar mold is made for the wings and tail surfaces. with a similar entry point for the vacuum, vacuum cleaner. So we make a wood holder for the sheet to be formed. It has to be held in tension all the way around when it's heated. I use nails. Here the sheet has been heated and placed over the vacuum form machine with the vacuum on. It's then trimmed and that's as finished as it gets. It's the same process is followed to make the wing and tail surfaces. The model built just by putting the parts together becomes a fairly basic model reminiscent of old solid wood models in that it has no glazing and few details. You could add details like cutting out the window areas and adding glazing, scratch building the cockpit, posing the various control surfaces, and even scribing panels. It still won't approach modern injection molded kits I'm afraid. And you can add lots of details. Thanks for watching.